other one is right. So you remember our biozoan is a colonial organism. So these are all the zoes, uh, <coughs> zoids that would have lived in zoecium, the whole structure. So think of very poor stuff. Sometimes they've been cut longitudinally, and you can see the whole kind of opening where each of those would have lived. Okay, so this unit here, this fossil, you see this very prismatic. If you look closely, it doesn't come through very well on the TV, but if you look closely, this has got lots of fine fibers um, of calcite. What do you think that is? Kind of shell. Small one. <laughs> I mean, Bye now. so this can is, we have a hint? You will, when you see these, you can see this very fine detail, right? And so whenever you have very fine, you know, prismatic-like structures, still, it tells you that that mineral is stable. If it's so what minerals do snails or clams make their skeleton out of? What mineral do they use? Regonite. Is regonite stable or unstable? Unstable. It's unstable. So if this was a regonite, it is either like modern or you've got spent some spectacular preservation. So this is going to be made of calcite then. Got this bit of preservation still. So this is the other shelly critter that you learned about. Brachiopod. Brachiopod. So this is the brachiopod. This is the long shell, really and then this is going to be like the hinge area that it would have, where all that kind of thickening occurs. Um, so here's another uh, long one. You can see on the outside edge those corrugated. Kind of features. Those are like the ribs or the growth lines that you would see in more of a three-dimensional one. Um, you might see um, on the outside of some of these, they are made uh, with uh, Anthony's put in some quartz chips, so he knows how thick to, to polish it down. So if you see the stuff on the outside, don't worry about it. Just just ignore it. This is a, a guide for Anthony or whomever to, to make the thin sections. Um, I'll start with the show. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. See this little dark area here? Yes. See how it kind of swirls around? What organism might that be? Yeah, so this is what a, a snail would look like, a gastropod. And it has, right, so you're looking down the central spire and it would have whirled around. And what you're seeing here is actually carving mud or crud that's built in there. So there's no shell here, but you do see the outline of it because of the mud that filled in. Um, early after it died, but before um, final uh, cementation. You can see this shell here, this isn't a good example, but you see this kind of very diagnostic crook or hook at the end. What organisms have that? The shepherd hook-like uh, features, how these are often described. The other fossils that you remember from our one through fifty class. You got to see that. Wait, hold on. Very thin, and it's got this hooker edger. Cup on the edge. Not like a clam or anything. No, not a clam. No. Uh, it's in the family of 
crabs. It's a cousin, I guess. This is a diagnostic feature of some sort of arthropod, probably a trilobite. Now, there's, so that's got the shape of a trilobite, but I want to find find a trilobite, first off, actually, you see, what is this here? Brachiopod. Yeah, that's a brachiopod. What's going on here? What mineral is this? Calcite. Yeah, so this is calcite. I've got it in XBL. So oh. this is blocky spar. So this is cement that's crystallized in here. And you see all these little lines here? This is what we call twinny. So those minerals are, so it's very diagnostic for like spar or blocky calcite to, to have that look. Um, so what's this little wormy thing? See this little hook? Yeah. <coughs> This is a trilobite. Now, arthropods have a very diagnostic uh, microstructure. Watch when I rotate this page. You see how it's kind of dark here and here and here? Watch what happens when I rotate the stage. See how it kind of sweeps through? Isn't that like on the left Yeah, so this is very characteristic of arthropods and how their shells look. So if you think you find one, try and rotate the stage with the polars crossed and see how those extinction patterns uh, behave. Are all trilobites going to do that? Uh, if they've got the shell still preserved, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to see like some like weak uh, extinction when it comes to that. Like so. Yeah, it's kind of weak, right? So here's like another one. Yeah. And it, it kind of sweeps through, but it's not like all at once. Gotcha. This fossil, see how uh, you have this cross hatch or this, these lines? Here. What mineral do you think that is? Here. Wait. You have it up here too? Is that just more calcite? Yeah, this is calcite. So chances are a lot of your lives are going to be calcite. Polars are crossed. Watch what happens when I rotate the stage. Ooh. See how it goes extinct all at once? What does that mean, those who have had mineralogy? What is this feature? Feature, what are we? What happens when a mineral goes extinct all at once? Isotropic. Yep, so this is a single crystal. This is a fossil. So what fossils do you know that made their skeletal material out of single crystals of calcite? Hmm. You see these fossils, you'll see all the sparklies. <coughs> Because they are single crystals. And you can see how big this is, right? What's the width of, uh, of the screen? Like this is two and a half X, so this is several millimeters in width here. So this is a big old fossil. <clears throat> the one haven't we talked about yet. Yeah, so, th so this is probably a crinoid. But this is a feature that is true of all echinoderms. So they will make their shells out of a single crystal of calcium carbonate. And sometimes if they're porous, if you see it, sometimes you might have a, a, a hole, right? So you might see the central columella like here. And that has filled in. You see how the outside part is stippled down here too. See, it's kind of pockmarked. It's not a nice pure crystal. It's because crinoids and echinoderms make their shells out of high mag calcite. So it's not super stable. It's okay, but it's not as great as low mag calcite, like what the brachiopods would look like.
So this is showing you there's a little bit of alteration, but that middle part doesn't have that. And so what you're seeing there, but it goes extinct at the same time. So that hole has been filled in with cement. And oftentimes cement, calcite cement is going to um, build on to the same mineralogy framework that's already there. Think of it as like building Legos on top of the framework that's already there. The Legos are just gonna chunk onto whatever template is already there. So you'll see that, you'll see a lot of these uh, echinoderm fragments, and it's best to just call it an echinoderm fragment. You can speculate if it's a crinoid, but you'll see a lot of places that the cement around these is going to penetrate, or at least when it goes dark enough, when it goes extinct, that will kind of penetrate into the rest of the slide um, as it's as it would have cemented. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're gonna have a lot of fossils and things to look at. Um, feel free to call me over and I'll help you identify these. It's gonna be um, probably slow to start as you get your eyes accustomed to this. I'm gonna ask you to identify a couple of the critters in here. Uh, I'm gonna also ask you questions about like the stages of cementation. So the way you can tell that is if you've got a grain here, so here's our fossil, you can look and literally count the different patterns and layers of cement that have grown outward from that, from whatever grain you're, you're looking at. So there's um, many of these fossils we'll look at, we, you've already seen these before, but now you're able to, to look at them in more detail in, in the section. Do we have any questions yet? Could you describe what the stages of cementation a little bit? More? Like you'll see, like, let's get out. The one that definitely has to do with the cementation cycle. So you see how you've got this like massive muddy crud stuff. And then you've got different shapes that line it. So there's initial, see those really teeny crystals first. Then you've got these blockier ones, and then you've got really big block ones, and then you've got stuff that fills in that too. So you can literally count the layers or stages of growth, as well as look at the different crystal habit of each of those as it, as it looks now. So is it just like high stage or, or just like a kind of value are we putting on that? Well, I mean, it's just it's the, the nature, the habit of those crystals. So is it like Size, shape, okay. and then it's always gonna be outward from whatever the Class or grade is. And these can the cement can happen on the inside too, so you might see internal molds of fossils as well. Anything else? Um, will this cementation still behave very similar to like the calcite cementation we saw on the Yeah, so what is from last week? What is this mineral here? Yeah, so it's just blocky spar. Now sometimes it can be colored, and maybe there's some impurities or something that was in the fluid, right? You can see this darker stuff. So maybe there was something in that fluid when it was undergoing cementation, but you can see there's a fuzzy pattern here. There's all, so this is, this rock has enjoyed quite a few stages of cementation.